Oklahoma has produced a ton of great running backs. Guys such as Adrian Peterson, DeMarco Murray, Samaj P. Ryan, Rodney Anderson, and Joe Mixon have all made names for themselves as Oklahoma running backs, but the subject of today's video was the next great one. In fact, he lived up to all the hype, was incredible his freshman year, and is one of the top running backs in Texas high school football history. Unfortunately, this would not translate to the NFL, as his stock absolutely crashed during this season. And in today's video, we're going to talk about why that happened, go through his star-studded Oklahoma career, and talk about his whole story. So, without further ado, let's continue our stock crashing series and get started. So you're probably wondering who the subject of today's video is, and it is none other than Oklahoma running back Kennedy Brooks. But in order to understand what went wrong for Kennedy Brooks, we first need to go back in time. Brooks grew up in the Lone Star State, more specifically the town of Mansfield. The dude always loved football and was also a pretty good athlete. His work ethic was second to none, so by the time his freshman year rolled around, he was seen as a future contributor. Brooks would ultimately burst onto the scene as a sophomore as he finished with 14 consecutive 100-yard games. At one point, he had 200 or more yards in 9 straight games. This dude was just insane. He became a local legend and never stopped producing. In 2015, Brooks ran for more than 3,500 yards and 42 touchdowns. That was over 200 yards per game on 30 carries. Brooks had this to say about it all. Quote, I'm not the best, but I work hard and I keep working. I just want to keep improving and do what I need to do for my team. His offensive coordinator gave some insight into how he got it all done. He said, quote, he's got great vision and patience. I don't know if I've ever been around a kid who's more patient waiting for blocks to be set up. And then he explodes through the hole. Once he gets into the hole, he doesn't slow down and he kind of just glides past people. After the 2015 season, he started to blow up as a recruit and he got his fourth star. Schools such as Missouri, Kansas State, Washington, Oklahoma, and Michigan started to recruit him pretty hard, and that did not slow down either. Brooks was insane. He rushed for 7,658 yards in high school with 96 touchdowns and an absurd 8.7 yards per carry. You'd think every school in the country wanted him, right? Well, kind of. Lincoln Riley and the staff were worried that he didn't pass the eye test. They thought his game would not translate to the high speed level of the Big 12, and his head coach thought that was a load of nonsense. He said, quote, I told them all the time, he's not gonna pass your eye test, but I promise you, he's the real deal. He doesn't always have that look, but when you watched him in high school, nobody ever caught him from behind, nobody ever got a clean shot at him. What he lacked in physical traits, he made up for in vision and anticipation. That came from a skill he picked up called chess. His coach said, quote, it's almost like he can just envision where guys are gonna be before they're even there. He sets them up and makes his move. He wasn't just good, he was elite. He won the prestigious Landry Award, which is given out to the top player in North Texas each year. He beat out Baron Browning, who went to Ohio State, Jalen Rieger, who went to TCU, Sean Robinson, who went to TCU in Missouri, and Jason Shelley, who went to Utah. All of them played high-level college football and were spectacular in their high school days. Brooks was going to take his recruitment slow and had an outline for what he was looking for. He said, quote, I want a team that will compete for a championship every year. I'm also looking for playing time and a place that will make me a better person and a better football player. So where would he end up going? Well, he was linked to Oklahoma early on, but some thought they had drifted apart. Then he just committed. He chose the Sooners over the likes of Arkansas, Michigan, Texas A&M, and Tennessee. His coach thought this was the right choice. He said, quote, he's going to fit in great. Oklahoma has a tremendous tradition with great tailbacks, and I think Kennedy will fit right in with them. Brooks is extremely excited to be part of the program with such tradition and such heritage. I think you're getting an excellent kid, and he's going to do great things for them. In the same class, he joined another running back from Georgia by the name of Trey Sermon, and those two would have a bright future ahead of them. According to 24-7 Sports, Brooks was a four-star recruit, the number 16 running back, and the 216th best player in the class of 2017. He had the eighth best season in Texas high school football rushing history, so expectations were obviously high, but there were critics, so how would he do? After redshirting in 2017, Brooks would join a running back room that included Trey Sermon, TJ Pledger, and Rodney Anderson. Unfortunately, Anderson would get hurt, and a lot of things went south for Oklahoma, so Brooks was forced to play a lot early. He would score a touchdown in his first game against Florida Atlantic, and then the following week would crack the century mark and have two scores in a win over Baylor. Against TCU, he had a career game as he went for 168 yards and one touchdown. This was the best freshman performance since Samaj P. Ryan, and it came as no surprise to their star quarterback, Kyler Murray. 
He said, quote, I think it's more so about an opportunity for him. This team knew what he was capable of, and he's been doing it since high school. It's exciting to see him go out and do what he did this weekend. The TCU game was great, but it didn't stop there. A few weeks later in their huge win over Oklahoma State, he ran the ball 15 times for 165 yards and three touchdowns, and then it continued. He had 171 yards and two touchdowns against Kansas, and then 182 yards and a touchdown in a huge win over number 13 West Virginia. This would help get the Sooners to the Big 12 championship game, where he did struggle as he only ran the ball 10 times for 28 yards, but he had a spectacular freshman year. It didn't even end there as they got to the college football playoff and he ran for 35 yards. In 2018, Brooks ran the ball 119 times for 1,056 yards and 12 scores. The sky was seemingly the limit for him and in 2019, he would now be part of a one-two punch. Jalen Hurts was now the quarterback and he would also join Ramondre Stevenson, Trey Sermon, and TJ Pleasure in the backfield. He would continue right where he left off as he had a touchdown against South Dakota in week two and then went for over 100 yards against number 11 Texas. He would once again score a touchdown against West Virginia before he had 132 yards and a touchdown in a one point victory over Iowa State. In a pivotal comeback victory over number 13 Baylor, Brooks went for 93 yards and then against TCU, he once again went off. He had 149 yards in that game, and he saved his best for last, as in their bedlam win over number 21 Oklahoma State, Brooks ran for 160 yards and one touchdown in that game. This would once again get the Sooners to the Big 12 Championship, where they would rematch against Baylor. This game went to overtime, and Brooks had a score in that one and helped them win 30-23. to For the second straight year, Brooks would help get his team to the college football playoff, where they would get killed by LSU in the first round, but he would at least score a touchdown. In what was sort of a shocking turn of events, Brooks decided to opt out of the 2020 season, and it wasn't because of the NFL. He just didn't play. He would return in 2021, though, with pretty high expectations. He joined a pretty crowded backfield that also included Marcus Major and Eric Gray, but he was definitely the main guy. Brooks would set the tone early as he went for nearly 100 yards and a touchdown in their week one victory over Tulane, and then in week three had a huge score that helped them take care of Nebraska. Against Kansas State, he went for nearly 100 yards and a touchdown, and then he had a career night. In what was one of the best college football games I've ever seen, Caleb Williams brought his Sooners back and Kennedy Brooks sealed the win and sealed the comeback with a game-winning touchdown. Against the Longhorns, he went for 217 yards and two touchdowns that day and had a historic afternoon in which he cemented his name into the Oklahoma record books. He once again torched TCU with 153 yards and then had two scores and a pretty close victory over Kansas. From there, he, he combined for 300 yards in their last three games, but, but two of them were losses to Baylor and Oklahoma State. Because of that, the Sooners went 10-2 in the regular season and missed out on both the college football playoff and a Big 12 championship berth. Instead of opting out of the bowl game, Brooks chose to play, and he definitely left his legacy in that game. Against number 14 Oregon in the Alamo Bowl, Brooks ran for 142 yards and three touchdowns. He finished his junior campaign with 1,253 yards and 13 touchdowns and went down as one of the best Oklahoma running backs ever. He finished his three-year Oklahoma career with 3,330 rushing yards and 31 touchdowns. This was awesome for him, but unfortunately, he was never really seen as a big-time NFL draft prospect. His name was not called during the 2022 NFL draft, but he did sign a deal with the Philadelphia Eagles. So for a player who was so productive and so good, why did he go undrafted and why did his stock fall? Well, believe it or not, it was actually kind of expected. One scout had this to say, quote, Brooks was never a highly touted name coming out of the draft. He was the 30th best running back and the 311th overall prospect. The two huge weaknesses in his game were the fact that he wasn't that explosive and that his mediocre 4.4940 time wasn't that great and this made executives think it'd be more difficult for him to turn the edge in the pros than in college. Basically, they were worried about his physical transition to the game in the NFL and while I see it, he was productive, played at a high level, and honestly deserved to get drafted. In Lamas' terms, he was not much of a threat out of the backfield, wasn't very quick, and people were worried the game had moved away from him. That's why he wasn't drafted, but I think he's going to be a steal for the Eagles, and I really hope he makes the roster. Brooks is one of those guys who's worked hard his whole life, has produced at every level, and deserves that chance. What do you guys think, though? If you're an Oklahoma fan, who's the best running back in school history, and what do you think of Kennedy Brooks? If you're a fan of another school, let me know what you think of Brooks, and give me another player whose stock fell or even went undrafted. I would also love to hear any ideas for a future video, so drop them below, as well as the like button and hit that subscribe button. Before you go, also don't forget to check out my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.